Hi folks, uh, welcome back to another video. So in this video, what we're going to be doing is another orthographic problem uh, based on this object here, okay? So what we have to do is we have to draw an elevation looking in the direction of arrow A. So essentially a little stick man standing there looking in this direction at it, what surfaces does he see? Uh, an end elevation or an end view looking in direction of arrow B. Once again, another little stick man there looking in this direction, what do they see? And then a bird's eye view looking down on top, I suppose, in the direction of arrow C, okay? And what do they see? So first of all, with any of these questions, what I would always do is I work out my overall length, width, and height. Lengths are associated with the elevation or lengths and heights. My overall length looking in this direction is 120, so I'll put that in. Overall width in the direction of arrow B, widths and heights for end elevation. So that is 85, okay? And then the height of it is 30, 15, 15, and 20, adds up to 80 millimeters in height just make sure 30 45 60 yeah 80 millimeters height and then our bird's eye view is associated with lengths and widths because when you're a bird in the sky you cannot tell the height of something looking down on top of it okay so there's our three measurements uh quickly going to refer to the model here in a second i've done up on on shape so just looking at it here in the direction of arrow a i've shaded in this surface red i can also see this yellow surface here Okay, the reason I didn't actually shade that in red is because I can also see this face in another view, which I'll explain in a second. So I can see this red face and this yellow surface. In the direction of arrow B, I can see this green face, this green face, this green surface. And I can also see this yellow face here, okay, which is why I actually put it in yellow because I can see it in view A and view B. I can see this yellow face here, obviously a shortened version of it, but I can see it so slightly because it's sloping upwards. And I also see this curved surface here, okay? And the reason I didn't put in the curved surface in green is because I can also see that in view C. If you see looking down, I did this blue surface, and I can see this yellow surface here and this yellow curve here when I'm looking down top of it, okay? Very important to note, when I have a curve, I will see it in two views, okay? So if I just refer to the model there, Okay, and we'll try and look what our answers are going to be. Okay, so there's the object. Looking at it from the front, okay, there's the object looking at it from the front. This is what I'm going to see. Red face and this yellow face. There's the two I'm going to see them right there. Looking at it from the end elevation, keep clicking over. Okay, that's going to be my end result. These three green faces and then this yellow surface, which is the sloping upwards, this curved surface here, and then this bit here. Now, this bit here, just going to highlight it there, that's the bit that's going maybe going to catch a student out, especially when they're new to orthographic projection, okay, and locating the points. We'll focus on that bit there. That's probably one of the ones where we won't have all the measurements for it at the start. And then the bird's eye view, if I just come around there to look at the top of it, there's the yellow surface, there's the blue surface, and there's the yellow curved surface. So there's our three surfaces looking down the bird's eye view. So I'd imagine in this one, our end elevation is probably going to be the trickiest one. So that's the answers there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back there and start the drawing. So I'm going to start with my elevation by putting in all the information possible. I do think I'll be able to get in everything in this view, okay, the red surface and the yellow surface. So I'm going to start off by putting in my various lengths, which is 90 and 30 at the bottom. I've also got lengths at the top of 55, 35 and 30, and my various heights then, 20, 15, 15 and 30. I'll put them all in in one go. So box is already laid out. Elevation went on the left because arrow A was pointing to the left. Okay, just refer back here. Arrow A pointing left, you put your end elevation on the left. Arrow B, end elevation will go on the right of the elevation. Plan always underneath the elevation. Okay, so various lengths. So 90 and 30 at the bottom. So there's my 90. And at the top then, I have lengths of 55 and 35. So 55 and 35 is 90 then. So there's my lens put in. Now I'm going to put in my heights of, just checking there now, I think the first one is 20. So 20 plus 15 will be 35, plus 15 again will be 50. So there's my heights put in here. All the heights, what I'm actually going to do is transfer them across lightly. Now, as always, I use a biro in my videos and I go over them in marker, okay? I'm going to put in my lengths in one go here, this one, and these two actually lined up with each other. Okay, so from that there, I can actually complete the structure. So I'll start having in a bit of information here. So first of all, this yellow surface here, this yellow line, I can actually see all of this. 
can see all of that there. Okay, every bit of that I can see. Probably a little bit off of my line there. Okay, this line here is going to be at the very front. It is 20, 20 millimeters high, which is up to there. Okay, and it's going to go heavy over as far as the 90. Even though it's a sloped surface or a slanted surface, okay, it doesn't matter. I'm still going to see it as a straight line when I look at it in the direction of arrow A. So that's that line there and up to there. So I'll start heavying that in over to here and goes up to here. Now, important to note, looking at our drawing, always using it for reference. From here, it, some people would appear that it might think it's just going straight across here. And it is going across, but it's actually going up at an angle. Because if you follow this guide up here, it's up 15. And that's where this line here is actually at, okay, at this point. So it's up 15 and over 55. So that's the 55 over and up 15. So that point there is the one I'm actually looking for. It's going to connect a diagonal line or an inclined line over there like that. Now I've got this point here. Then we know it goes straight up vertical, up 15. And at this point here, now, even though it's a slanted line once again, this is actually a flat surface here, this blue surface. So that's actually just a straight line across, kind of like this one is here. So that's going to go straight across and then connect back down. And there we have our yellow face. Now, this point here and this point here, when we're looking in the direction of arrow A, they actually share a relationship that they are in the same position, okay? Even though this point, this one here, is actually directly behind it. When I look at it in the view in the direction of view A, the elevation, they will appear in the same position. So now I'm here, I'm going to go straight across, and I'm going to try and get this face here, which looks like it's connected onto it, okay? So I'm going to heavy that all the way up to the top. I'm going to heavy in this section right here. And as you can see here, we've got a curve here, which has a radius of 30. So from the top, I'm going to have to mark down 30. And I think I've already done that distance there. If I just check it, 12 or let's say 13 down to 10. Yep, this point here is 30 millimeters already down. So it's already done for me. So I just need my compass then. So I'm just using a little attachment on my compass for my marker. Hopefully this comes out okay. Usually with the markers, it can be a little bit off at times. So using this point here as my center point for my arc, I'm just guide it up here. I'm going to mark it there first and mark it there. Yeah, it's not too bad. Happy with that. And there we go. There is our curve put in. Probably a touch high there, but that's okay. I'm using the marker. I let it off. So there is our elevation completed. Now what we're actually going to do is we are going to move on to our plan view next, okay? The reason I'm going to move on to the plan view is because it's the next view that I think I can complete fully. Um, the reason I'm not going to move on to the end elevation is because I, even though I have the width for this, which is 25, I don't have the width for this little bit here, this green surface there. It does not tell us the width of that section there. So that line there is going to be hard to find in a while, okay? And I think that's actually going to come from my plan view. Okay, so that's why I'm not going to move on to the end of elevation just yet. So for the plan view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer down any lengths that I have. So here is the 30 at the very start. That's going to be my sloping surface. And then the 55 and 35. So there are my various lengths brought down. 55, 35 and 30. Now I'm going to put in the widths. Okay, so looking down in the plan view, I want to be able to heavy in. I want to be able to heavy in this guy. This guy. So I see that yellow surface, okay, which is what we're going to see there because I see this line above this line. Then I see the blue surface, and then I'm actually going to see this curved surface, but I'll actually see it as a rectangle, okay, which is really important there. And I suppose looking at it, what do I see? Yeah, it's actually kind of appear nearly like that, I suppose. So that's what I'm actually going to see this yellow surface, this blue surface, and this yellow surface. So I'm going to associate the width with that then. So this width here is 25. Starting in the top, if I'm looking down on top of it, this here is the top left-hand corner of the box, which would be right there. Okay, so it's going to measure 25, and then I've also got a 45 and a 15. So there's my three widths, 25, 45, and 15. So from this point over here, I'm going to measure down 25. 25 plus 45 will actually be 70. Okay, if you want and you're not good at quick maths, that's okay. Just bring your zero to the next point and do the 45. And there's our two little marks there. 
Now, the 25 stays there. I know I don't have to travel uh, transfer that across. But the 45, we just refer to drawing here, that's going to go all the way in reference to this point here, which is 90 along, which is actually on this line. So I'm going to bring it over to this line here. It's actually guiding me there. You don't have to bring the line over. I could have just used that as a guide and marked it. But that point there is going to connect to this one because that is actually going to be, when I'm looking down top of it, this slanted or slope surface here. So I'll connect this across. And there we have it. Okay, that actually is that slope surface. So I'm going to heavy that in. Okay, because when I'm looking down top, I'll see this line here, which is here. Then even though it goes up, okay, we don't see that on our page. It's going to stay in the same position because these two points, when I'm looking down top of them, will share the same position. And then it's going to go along here, which is this section. Okay, so it appears as a continuous line. Now, this little bit here. Okay, then I've got this line here, which is the blue line. Okay, which begins there. So that's my reference for it. And then I'm going to see this line here, which is the blue surface. So there's the yellow done and the blue done. And the last bit then, looking down the top, I'm going to see this whole yellow section. When I'm looking down the top of that, that will actually appear as a rectangle right there. So I actually should have heavied in this. I'm heavy in this the whole way down. So there we have it. There is our plan view done okay so the last one we're actually going to work on to now is the end elevation which is this green face here this green face green face yellow and yellow okay and actually another bit of yellow here so it's a little bit more confusing so to start off i suppose the easiest thing to find out probably would be this bit here at the front this green face okay we have all our lengths and all our widths already put in so we're going to start transferring them across to our end elevation so any heights Sorry, I should have said widths and heights. So any heights will come straight across. So you can see I brought all my heights across. Now, any widths that I have, which is this one here, I'm gonna bring that across and this across. And where they come across, I'm gonna transfer them up and this one's going to go up as well. I think it's just up to about there as far as I know. Okay. Now, that green face at the front of it, which is this guy here, that's coming from this height and this width. So it has to be between these two lines here. This one and this one. And then the width of it is between these two lines. So follow them across, follow them up. That means that is the green face. So I'll heavy that in. Lots of you following this video probably know exactly what I have to heavy in, but it's important that we understand the mapping behind it. So there, one on silent. There we go. So there's that green face at the front of it. Okay. Now I suppose the next face I probably want to work onto is I suppose it's this actual face here, which is actually the tricky one. Okay. So I want to get that sloping line there. So I'm going to use indexing once again to help us here. So on this surface here. Okay, I've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six points. I'm going to start this one here at the bottom, number one. I'm going to go up, number two. This point here is number three. Then this one, number four, five, and six. And six goes back to one. Okay, so if I want to label those in my views, let's find them. So one and two, there's one, there's two, goes to three here, four five and six so one two three four five six okay let's label those in our plan view so one and two looking down on top of it two is actually on top of one so two on the outside one on the inside one goes on the inside because it's underneath two okay then three and four are in this position so they're actually here okay that's where the step is there so four sits on top of three four and we're gonna go three there and then five sits on top of six over here. So five on the outside, so six on the inside. So there we have the points. And as you can see, this is the one I was on about. We weren't given this length here in, or sorry, our width here in the in the elevate, or sorry, in the end elevation. Okay. So we actually had to find that, and we could find it by 
drawing the plan. Now that we actually have that width, what can I do? Transfer that across. I've seen it earlier, I just wanted to reference it, so I left it. So I'm going to bring that across and bring it up. And we'll be using that somewhere up here now. So let's use our indexing method to find our points. Okay, so number one and number one. One is across the bottom, so it's going to be here. So there's number one. Let's find number two. Two is across here, so it's up here. So there's number two. Let's find number three. Three is across here, where his 45 degree line up. So it's somewhere up along here. Let's find it here. It has to be the same height. There's number three. Let's find number four. It's on the same line as three. It's only at a different height. There's number four. Then we've got number five, which is out here and across. So there's number five. And then finally, number six is on the ground, followed across. Number six. There we have you. So there we have that surface, okay? One connects to two. Two will connect to three. That's probably the hard line got. Three connects up to four. Five connects to six. I'll do the two diagonal lines then. Six to one. And four to five. That's probably the hard part done. Now that I've got three and four, which is really helpful, okay, I know where my surface, my green face begins, and I know where it's going to end. It's going to end it right over here at the edge of it. So that's going to put in the green face there. And while I'm doing that, that's going to connect down, and then it's going to connect down all the way here to the front, which I'll see is a straight line. Okay, so now we've got that yellow face there. That green face there, green face here, yellow face here. The green face here is at the side, so I'm going to see that line there, which is connected on down here. And it's going to go up all the way to the top, because I'm going to see that line going all the way up. So even though it curves, I'm still going to see it as a straight line. And then it's going to go all the way across the top and down to the blue surface. So connect this down and connect this across. Bring that down there. There you have it. That is the question completed, guys. A um, little bit trickier. Um, the bit that people will get confused on is, I suppose, this kind of slanted surface here, or this slope surface here that can catch people out a little bit and trying to determine exactly where that line is there, okay? So what I would always advise is if you're getting a little bit caught, okay, on a slanted surface or a slope surface, uh, index your points, okay? and then uh, follow the mapping method and that won't let you down. So we're just gonna have a quick look obviously at the object to see how we did. So looking at the front, or sorry, the end elevation, there we have it, that was the tricky one where we got that surface in there, just quickly refer back. Yeah, there it is, okay? So I look, I, I'm happy with that. That's the question completed. Hope you found that helpful.